Hello. Hello. Hi, Kathy. Thanks you so much for being here with me. <laughs> this is Kathy Thank Marshall, you. and I am Jill Woodworth, and we are here to have a discussion about some interactions that we've had related to Kathy's business and some work that uh, she helped facilitate with myself and my son, Jack, in the last few months, and kind of going to give you an outline about what what happened and how we connected and the work that we did and we'll go from there and uh, with our discussion but first i i wanted to introduce kathy and just uh thank you for being willing to do this i i really appreciate it and all the stuff that we've done together i'm really grateful that our paths cross so <laughs> me too put that out there first <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. So Kathy is is a self self employed and works at as a um, founder practitioner. Not works at, but she has her own business instructor at Quantum Wellness with Kathy. So that's the name of her business in Kingston, Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, she is. I'm going to just kind of read through your bio because I think it's important. Um, Kathy is. So if I look down for a minute. Kathy is a vibrational alignment facilitator, helping you with, to name a few, your limiting beliefs, space clearing, angelic guides, spiritual team, intuition, spiritual and or personal development, self-regulation, educational needs, familiar patterns, emotional discomfort, and more. Kathy is a certified quantum touch practitioner, a certified quantum touch level one instructor, a wellness health coach an Institute of Integrated Nutrition, IIN graduate, and an elementary educator with over 18 years of experience with physical needs, neurodivergent, nonverbal, and behavioral communication challenges, both working within and outside the educational system. So you tutor, you said, I think I said that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Former educator with the Ontario public school system. So mm -hmm. I'll... Uh, really really juicy interesting stuff to me <laughs> um so yeah so i met kathy we were both on Lori lad's platform big Lori mm -hmm. lad's great big energetic heart i put down mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh so we we i'm i have it down that we exchanged emails regarding the patches and your yeah. dad um, yeah. So I say I market these or I, I use these lightweight patches, which are stem cell activating. Um, yeah, it's like a little patch. And so we started a conversation about that and uh, had a conversation. I, I'm not quite sure your dad was open to that at the time, but um, it started our friendship. Yeah, and it did. <laughs> so maybe that was the reason for it. Yep. So thank you, dad. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. It's so, it's so funny how those things happen. You know, it might uh, not always be the thing that you're thinking that it's going to be for. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were friends on Facebook. And so I put up some very uh, raw type videos and kind of in an open book. And you cut, reached out and said, I, you know, I like your content and I feel like we should have a conversation. I think it was something like that. Like I, I got a, a ping to have a conversation with you. And so we got together and let me see, I, it's saying I'm unstable. Let me just make sure I have everything shut down here. I'm just wondering what you were saying, because usually yeah, when someone's it. saying something, it's got an energetic to it that is shorting out the system. So, huh. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, what was I saying? I was saying, I, uh, no, you totally lot through, you know, that thing threw me off. Ugh. Anyways, you, oh, I ha I know. I ha So I had the videos on Facebook and you sent me a message and said, hey, Jill, do you want to have like a conversation or uh, yeah. like it was just kind of out of the, not out of the blue because we're, we were kind of friends and we might've even messaged before that. And I was like, to just talk, you just felt a, a call to reach out, and um, yeah, was it was like, one of your one of your photos about the the old hospital. Okay, I that, forgot that. I it was right. I had to reach out because I had to ask because <laughs> my so, guidance tells me to do stuff, and I I just follow it. That's a, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I I I think that's where we're all headed. Um, 
to be able to listen to tap in like that. I'm mm-hmm. still still in that process, but uh, so yeah, so I was I. like, <laughs> wow, that's really cool. I was I was really excited about that, especially that someone took an interest in that because. It, I guess I should give a little background. My son and I have a have a good relationship. He has a is an intellectual disability related to tuberous sclerosis complex and just highly um, enmeshed in the medical system. And a lot of he's had a lot of stuff happen, and so he's had a lot of challenges. But he has this ability, or over the years, it's become more profound that he's able to. You know, I guess it, I would say like I don't want to even say psychic, but more metaphysical. Um, sensory, he's able to pick up on a lot of energetics mm-hmm. that typical, but I can't. Um, for instance, mm-hmm. he's seen apparitions and he he's done he, for a while, you know, and I think as a parent, I brushed a lot of it off for probably a number of years until more recently, till I became um, more aware of the validity of this. And maybe mm-hmm. I should kind of listen to what he's saying. Um, and you know, not just kind of, oh, well, he's talking about this and he's got these real strong areas of obsession around certain parts of of land at his father's and at this place that we live near in Rutland. And so I posted some mm-hmm. pictures and that's how you ended up reaching out. You got a some kind of a ping or something. You were following guidance and mm-hmm. we had a phone call. And I remember... Uh, we just started talking and you gave me some of your background. You told me about the quantum touch and kind mm-hmm. of what you, what you were doing as work, which I didn't really know. I think up till that, you know, I knew that you were in the kind of awakened space and with Lori and whatnot. So, and I was really interested uh, about the work you were doing in Kingston. I think it, it was in Kingston where you were, wa- you were yep. walking around the land and you were, you were getting a lot of guidance with um, some of the, if I get this wrong, please correct me. The, the okay. architecture or the buildings that were in the area, there was a lot of energetic energies that you were guided to kind of to ground or to um, to work clear. with. To clear, yeah. thank you, to clear. Yeah. And I was fascinated because I knew a little, I know a little bit about grid work, if that's the name that, that you use. I, I know there's, I've heard different names, but mm-hmm. um because I felt like somehow it was related to to things with Jack and me personally. So I I was really fascinated when you were talking about the, your experience and, and just how you were doing that. So I think through the course <laughs> of our conversation, we decided to have another call and work and bring Jack in and kind of talk about that and see, you know, just see how it went, see if some work could be done. And um yeah. We well, and it was interesting because what tweaked it for me was you were telling me about the place that you go running and walking and how you're constantly kind of noticing or aware of where that state hospital used to be. And I had had a similar experience of something that was... um a band, like sold and it was being torn down and something new was being built in its place. And I knew I had, I knew that I was there for a reason and um, I had to clear it because there was, there were souls that were trapped there that needed to be released so that they didn't affect anybody new and uh, that was moving into that. Um, Because it was being two buildings now have been built directly on top of that old property. And so when you were talking about it, I kept getting visions of that property. So what happens for me is things I've experienced when other people mention, and I see it in my head, um, in my mind's eye, uh, I know that that's what's supposed to happen. It's the same thing that needs to be done or something similar. At least it gets me on that path to do whatever it is that needs to be done. So it's a lot of following guidance and whatever needs to happen to clear that area. Yeah. Right. I think it's starting to come back a little bit that that was, that was the impetus. And Mm -hmm. so when we we did exchange emails before we had the appointment and you had asked me to send uh, specific information about both the land that, that this mental hospital had, had 
been on that I'd had the experience with, which for me was, I'll, I'll just lay it out for me. Um, I had an experience with a tree on that, on that property that it had grown into the fence. Um, mm -hmm. And it was kind of like symbolic to me of personal stuff and just the kind of the torment or the, the energies that were on that, on that land. And Jack had had um, experiences on mm -hmm. this land where he saw an apparition um, profound experience that he, you know, he recalls very clearly today, as well as feeling energy there of a real heavy, mm -hmm. like, mom, I'm sad. I feel, I feel uh, like this heaviness here um, and hearing him express that. Mm -hmm. So that was, so I, you asked me to send you like the, the coordinates of the land and any information. So I, I sent that to you as well as um, my son, um, I'm divorced, so his dad lives in this this land, this property, um, not mm -hmm. too far away, like four miles away, and um, over a hundred years old. The house is, and there's there used to be a sawmill on the site that Jack has a connection with, mm -hmm. and uh, so talking about he was talking talking about it quite a bit and he mentioned something to me about a wormhole there and I think that was one of the things that I thought I was like I can't ignore this I mean he's talking about wormholes and he's he articulated it like he was in the past present and future at the same time I'm like this is a kid that you know struggles with a lot of like language and expression and he's pulling this stuff out I'm like whoa okay this is a sign that we need to to do something about this and, and just not really understanding his place with that or, or like what that was. And so, yeah. and you mentioned that, um, you know, that, that we could talk about that, that you under, you kind of understood that this was prior to even going into the call. Mm -hmm. So that was my, so those were the two things that we were kind of going to work on. And um, mm -hmm. that kind of that we did work on that we did work on. Yeah, because I when you were telling me about it, I was already getting information. So that's what happens to me. I've noticed is when people start talking about something, I'm not even working with them yet, but I'm already getting information. And so it happens all the time. Sometimes I'll get information a week in advance. Sometimes I'll get it in the moment that I'm talking to someone before an appointment or <laughs> how does so it I was come asking, in is it like is it it's pictures? like a little movie and or pictures for me that's how I, it, it happens for me is flashes of of an image and if okay. the guidance is really insistent it's like the image will flash and hold and so I and then it doesn't go away until wow. I go ahead and do it and so if there's something I really need to do, um, it doesn't go away. So it'll, wow. it's usually go for a walk, go for a walk. So today I went to um, a park nearby. And as of yesterday, I kept seeing the park and where I was supposed to walk in my head. And it kept, it just didn't go away. So I, it's not like it's consistent, but it's, it's, constantly popping up in my head so wow. I knew I had to go and I didn't make it yesterday so I went today and um and it's interesting because sometimes it's you have to go by yourself but today it was you have to take the dog so I it's very insistent I almost left her here really because I just I well I had such a short amount of time to do it in that I thought oh I don't know if I can do this and then I thought no just go allow it to be whatever it is and it was great um, and because it's interesting now, I just realized <laughs> this particular property has a brand new, um, medical institution on it, uh, that is for people with mental, um, health issues, as well as I think it's also a senior living home, like an end of life place. I'm not a hundred percent sure. And then the, uh, and then neck on the, this same property further away is this old limestone um, institution that is now closed down and has been for quite some time. And it was interesting because <laughs> I was 19 and answered an ad and went and walked through this place. I was terrified at the time. Oh my goodness. Because I, 
<laughs> but I just think it's yeah. funny how everything, because I was thinking about this this morning, that remembering going through and walking through. Wow. So, so the, the, the work that I do with quantum also deals with past, present, future. So I was sending energy to my past 19 year old self wow. while I was walking through that institution because they walked me through a whole bunch of locked doors. So I think they do this on, they did this on purpose to see if someone was actually going to stay. And of course I went and then I never approached them again. Cause I think they saw the terror. In my eyes. <laughs> I was very young and naive. And so, uh, no, I was not for me, but wow. It's wow. interesting that I could probably very easily now work with someone that would have been in that place. So, wow. um, yeah, that's fascinating and and so relevant to what we're talking about anyways, just, yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of the, what you were able to do with Jack. So mm -hmm. not to skip ahead too much. So we have the call and, uh, and Jack comes on and I wasn't sure, you know, how he was going to be, how well he was going to be able to articulate it. I mean, being the like overprotective parent that's, um, yeah. <laughs> so you did great. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, right away we, you had, you had Suki, your dog there and he caught on to, that made him like smile. He, he loves animals and, um, yeah. and so it, just the energy was just felt really natural and, um, and he was able to start talking about it and like, and there was a click where I felt like he realized that you understood him on a level that I don't think anybody really had or heard what he was saying on an energetic level that you know wasn't even verbal I would say that it wasn't in. yeah and he, he like he, he was like oh someone actually believes me or and like gets it and uh he was talking yeah. about the the past present and future and um you you were able to explain to him the importance of him as a divine human being just I mean, you didn't necessarily use those words, but um, the the importance, why why it was coming up for him, and um, the importance of of him, his his lifetime, and being able to like feel, mm -hmm. like send. Maybe you can explain this better. Kind of like I don't want to say en energy back because it's all right here and now. Like Jack, we were talking about the past, present, future, kind of stacked or whatnot. Yeah. Um, so, so one yeah. of the things that happens to me, I've learned um, that I probably always had it and I just didn't know, <laughs> is uh, when people describe or talk about something, I'd always been told when I was a kid that my imagination created something in my head from listening to their description. And I now realize that so I was in a meditation group and we were talking about a meditation we would because we would all meditate at the same time mm -hmm. and after we would kind of debrief of what everybody kind of saw or felt or information they got however someone receives and one of the women was talking about what she saw and I said what color are the robes and she told me the, the color and I said that's the exact color and this exact thing I'm wow. seeing and she looked at me and she said didn't you know you could do that and I said no I thought I was creating my own scenario in my head I didn't realize I was seeing what you're seeing in your head what you're seeing I am so it, it wow. happened I, I'm not quite sure how but that is something that I'm able to do um or gift or guidance or team, whatever. It's it's not a me thing. It's a it's an energy thing. And um that's what happened is I yeah. I knew everything that he was describing, I could see it. And so that was the click. Is yes. he realized I could see it. That's it. And so he it didn't really need to describe that much because he knew I was seeing it as well in my mind's eye. Um, which I was, you know, which we're told is our imagination. And right. I'm not, 
hundred percent sure that's what it is all the time. No, uh, no, I think <laughs> brilliant in, yeah. insight into that. Cause I think so many of us brought, I mean, this comes up for me, the, the signs and the guidance that we are, um, that we're given or whatever. We're just so in this like rat race that it, you know, yeah. we brush it off. Like, eh, that doesn't mean anything. So. Yeah. And that, then the other thing that happened is he was talking and he was describing like, it's like he was watching a movie. And so I thought, oh, he's can see it. So he's, but then he mentioned something and I just was blown away because he said something and I said, what was that? And he, he repeated it. And that's when I realized that he's not seeing it. He's standing in the middle and he's watching them all move and live around him. And I was floored. So when you say that he's past, present, future, I feel like he's living in the quantum more than we are. Definitely. Because, because he's standing in the middle of the, what is now demolished sawmill, but he's seeing it all the way it was, and he's watching them all interact. Now, I'm going to tell you, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he gave me an insight, and I was telling him about this, how floored I was. And he looked at me and he said, well, he used to be in that life. That's why. Mm -hmm you think so? And he goes, yeah, I'm pretty sure he lived there in that time. And he probably knows who he is in that lifetime. Because he wanted, he had asked something about how did, can they see me? Right. <clears throat> and I said, that's when I realized he's standing right there in the middle of it. And so I thought, whoa, first I was like floored. And then I had to think about what to say. Right. And so of course, it's not about me. It's about his guidance and his inner healer is talking to my guidance and my inner healer and I'm interpreting. So it's not my information. It's whatever he needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, <laughs> that's when I said, well, just send them love. You, they probably won't be able to see you because it would scare them because they would think that you are a ghost or an apparition. They won't realize that you're. I lost you for a minute. Yeah, it Sorry. was talking about the Jack and being yeah. in just keep going everywhere. That tells me that he's uh, a little bit more powerful than we realize. Yeah, and that's a, a lot more. <laughs> and if you spent a few days with him, like just the topics that come up, even I had to drive him to this, this like bedraggled house that is nearby this other, I think he might've mentioned that another property that is somehow co that's connected with this sawmill. So, yeah. you know, it all starts to make sense. And, and, you know, I take it far more seriously. And I will say that after that session, it came up, it's come up before I can feel that he has settled. Like he feels much more at peace with just that whole situation he's still got to be in his bonnet about this finding out some other information historically and yeah and, but he said i'm so glad and he referred to you as that psychic <laughs> like i'm so glad i got to talk to that psychic that's what he said because he he said she understood you know she i i feel like he felt happy that he he could said yeah. love like he there was something he could do you know and he has had he did have a uh, qhht session back oh gosh a few years back and he definitely had a life there that did come up i tried to find the recording of it but it's it's lost so for That's sure okay. this was like opening real like a lot of doors for for me uh, but for him too and um yeah well it's funny because i don't see it as being a psychic i i'm just a mirror that's the way I see it is what I do with right. anybody I work with, whatever I'm doing with them is just kind of reflecting back at them what it is they need to see about themselves. So sometimes it's validating, which it was for him. Mm -hmm. It was validating right. everything that he was seeing and thinking and feeling it, it was, it's real. Um, it's not a figment of his imagination. Um, and something tells me that 
other location that he's now interested in, I'm betting that's where he used to live. So whoever he was, that's that the information I'm getting is that he worked at the sawmill, but that's his, that's his old residence. Wow. He's just yeah. taken pictures of the inside of it. And all. I, he went, he went to the, a house nearby that where the former owner of this property lives. Yes. Two days, I don't know, two days ago. And um, I found yeah. out the name of the owner and he went, I made him go do it himself. Um, go up to the door. I'm like, I'm not doing this. This is you. But he's got the confidence now to do it. He went up and he asked if he could walk around the property and take pictures. And so that's what he did. So I, that's how, I'm not sure what our next step will be there, but really, yeah. Kathy, it was just, I'm so grateful to you for this. I mean, it's given me like a enhanced the connection I have with him and just given me a lot of like compassion too for him walking through this, this crazy world and having that, those like that ability to see kind of going back into his childhood you know yeah well and that's the thing too is it reframes everything because you realize like I've done that for myself has gone back to my childhood and and kind of looked at everything from a different perspective and then I, I realized I was always extrasensory and always discerning of who to hang around with and who not to and that was always happening and that's like his, I've worked with students similar. I can, I'm now I'm feeling into his sensory, extra sensory. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of one student I used to work with and he reminds me a lot of him. And it's, it's this extra sensory. Um, I can't even, it's like they can sense things that we don't even know exist. And it, and part of me wondered with this student, and I'm wondering if with Jack as well is, can he sense things before it happens? So is there a time sensing as well? So, which I find fascinating. <laughs> well, I he did just relay to me one experience that there was a, a one of his friends that he used to go to his program with. Her mother was killed in an accident, and he he knew when she passed. He said he knew when he didn't tell her that day, mm -hmm. but he was like, I, he's like, mom, I, I felt like I was sitting next to her and I felt her, her mother's spirit like leave. Mm. And then the next day, the teacher at school told the class that so-and-so wasn't in school today because her mother had died. And the intelligence that he has to not say anything to her when it happens because he knows she's not ready to hear it. Right, is, right. Is amazing, yeah. right? Like it is, I know, I know. His yeah. emotional intelligence is off the charts. Off the charts. It's always been, it always has been. I mean, he's, it, and it's been a teacher for me in many cases. I can't uh, skip. Yeah. Um, gosh, this, my connection keeps going weird. Are you still there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Am I here? <laughs> really red am i here hello hello oh, crap Ugh. where is that network key all right hope we're not going to go out i don't know why this is happening all right we're taking a little break that must have been too much energy hello hi i'm so sorry I need to get my partner to hook me up to the main um, oh. server. No, don't okay? worry about it. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll put them together. All right. Oh, yeah, I feel terrible. No, like, don't. Maybe the energy I, I just laughed. I think you might have blown the circuits out with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How you felt about that, I think, blew it. So I was just working with the, the connection. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I get frustrated when it happens, but um, thanks for being patient. Um, no, yeah, so that okay. was so, it was so beautiful. And um, yeah, and the, I don't know. Um, so going into the, my experience on the land and Jack's experience yeah. kind of was similar. And the work that you did with Jack, I mean, he, it didn't require him to go do anything or really just, I think you mentioned that he could go out there and- yeah. So where was I? I yeah. was on, where were we? We were talking about the, 
the other land experience. You were I, talking, you started talking about the, the land. Right. So I had this, we walked, so we live in a small town and there's this place that um, where there used to be, it was like a state hospital that did a lot of mental health type stuff. It had been several different things over the years and they mm -hmm. tore it down. And that's where Jack had, and we, our family walked back there in the woods around the property. And then that's where Jack had seen an apparition one time. He came home and he, it was kind of dusk and he said, mom, I saw this white light and it was moving towards me and really, really, um, mm -hmm. in heightened experience. And then he, like I said, he talked about the energy of the, the grief and sadness, heaviness. And I had felt some of that. I'm not as, as uh, sensitive as he is, put it that way. And, um, but I did have an experience <laughs> out running like pride where I had felt, um, real, like I had gone into the, the run kind of in a sad, like bad place. And I felt called to go out to the woods and there was a tree there that, like I said, is grown into the fence. And I laid my hands on that tree and just kind of, um, I, I was praying and just, I felt very connected with it and shortly after i mean like and my energy shifted and i i was out of the dark mindset so um and i think yeah. i shared i might have shared that with you and yep and so what we did was i we i gave you the the coordinates and um you you kind of coached me through going out there and I forget the exact details of it, but we, Jack I, and I had a ceremony. If yeah, I, I, I did um, some energetic clearing. So I've been taught a technique um, from one of my teachers and um, it's a uh, archangel um, clearing method. So you use right. four archangels of direction. And so they, they clear on different levels, like the emotional layers, um, physical, spiritual, and mental layers. So they clear all of that from the property. Um, and okay, right. I did that after we talked. And then you, I was given guidance to, to ask you guys if you wanted to, to go and kind of thank the land right. for everything that it had carried because it had carried all that and had all the souls were trapped there and all that sadness and pain and really dark stuff um, was there. And the, the, tr I got the information I got was that the tree that you, the tree is gave you information so that it, cause they knew that we were going to clear it. So it was all, and they, Jack saw what he saw so that we would clear the land. And so it was nature, it was the trees mm -hmm. and nature communicating with you guys and whatever that bright light was um, for Jack. Um, it was to, it feels like it was an angel to me, um, communicating to him what was on that property. Mm -hmm. Kind of, it feels to me like it, um, it's kind of a warning system. So it's a, it's either one of his guides or an angel that warns him of what's in this area so that he doesn't go near. Wow. So he it's there and he experiences it, but he knows that he doesn't want to go any further. If that makes sense. It does. It does. It, it kind of feels like he's got a warning system and that's what that is. So I can imagine as a child, he probably had this warning system then, but of course, looks different than it does now that he can communicate what it is he mm -hmm. saw and that and that you're willing to listen that's the other part it's a yeah. it's a lot of pieces that are and it's not that you know i was seeing stuff as a kid that i didn't know and no one around me knew what it was either so i just didn't tell anybody i saw tons of stuff in my head that you know we now say now oh well that that child has experienced, has seen that in real life, or that's the only way they can know about that or talk that way. And I'm now realizing that's not necessarily the truth because I was seeing things that were scaring the living daylights out of me. 
Um, and so I would just kind of put a wall up so that it couldn't get through or I didn't yeah. see it or, um, which is what we're able to do, or I just didn't tell anybody. So I just right. sat there quietly seeing crazy stuff happening in my head and feeling horrible because I was feeling everybody's feelings. And, um, I just sat there not, I knew not to tell anybody because they would have sent me to an institution. Right. And that's a lot. That's a lot for a kid to to carry, you know? Well, it's interesting because I knew I was very grounded in that. It, it's interesting when you, as an adult, when you go and look back, I wasn't thinking like a child in that moment. Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> that's not a decision. That's a, like, that's a wise decision. To be able and to so, hold that back too, you know, and not yeah. just like freak out or blurt it out and have people be like, you're crazy, like something higher. Well, I had, I think I had told my mom a couple of times and she told me not to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah she didn't I'm know sure what she to did. do. I mean, she had no idea. Stuff that I say to Jack, like, don't tell the psychiatrist <laughs> necessarily about these, so, these experiences. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Think, so why this, it's cutting out like this. Cause I, I've never had this happen to this degree. I think it, it's because of what we're talking about. It, could, it very well could be. Yeah. I feel like a lot of energy coming through me just talking about it. Um, yeah. But, so, yeah. So I, I'm just going to say we went, Jack and I went back out there and we did, we brought an offering. I think, um, I forget what, exactly what I brought, but some, I think I might've had a feather and some acorns, just an offering and burn some sage mm -hmm. and put our hands on the tree and said a prayer. And he was so engaged with that too. I, I filmed a little bit about of it and mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, he's a 22 year old young man and that he takes an interest in is it's just, it's created a really nice bond for us in a way that, you know, we hadn't ha quite had. So there was that, yeah. that piece of it too, that has been Good. helpful. Yeah. So I am like really a, I never understood, well, I still don't really understand all the details of it, but the importance of it. And so now I'm watching this land, like you mentioned that things were going to be improving and that there has been a whole lot of work has been done. And I have full faith that that is true. I mean, I'm the name of the property there that they're building is called Harmony. Isn't that funny? Perfect. <laughs> Isn't that great? I took some pictures yeah. of the sign. I'll have to send it to you. So yeah, they're really, That's they're, awesome. it seems like a very intentional, like they're, they're, hopefully it'll be wonderful for the people there now and um, mm -hmm. that we got the chance to do this. And yeah, I'm really grateful for your, for your work and your, your skill level. And uh, just also people with disabilities that have a cognitive piece to it. I think this kind of work can be really valuable. I know other families that have kids with a similar diagnosis that do have, when I post about spiritual experiences or metaphysical, however you want it, paranormal, uh, people pop up and they say, my, my so-and-so, my son, my daughter is, is having, you know, has had told me things. And I think they come in, obviously they come in with that code and, and whatnot, but also I think that they're not as indoctrinated because they can't access our education system that to start that programming loops that make us tune it all out well they're they're they came in the way they're supposed to come in to be and that that takes a while to accept i've i've witnessed and you know when you you want we want our egos want things to be a certain way and then what i've learned with this work is one of the big one of the most important parts of quantum touch is um, kind of back off and don't, um, what is, I'm trying, I'm blanking on the term. It'll come to me. And when it does, I'll say it. Um, there's the other thing too, is just allowing to be whatever it is. I can, I'm thinking of the term, but I can't find the words, but it's, um, let me take a minute. Allowing whatever it is to be and not judging mm -hmm. because when you're in when you're in your ego that's the judging and and the wanting things to be a certain way but releasing all outcome that's what we need to do mm -hmm. in this work is that it's not about 
what we want. It's about whatever is supposed to be and allowing people to have their own choices. So it's, for me, it's focusing on love, unconditional love, no matter what you love and whatever that is, then you go from there. And so when I find when I'm in this energy, which we've been in this whole discussion, <laughs> um, it, uh, I kind of feel like my ego's over here yeah. and I'm doing, I'm doing other work and, and being guided and shown what to do. So I find it really interesting because it's different for every person. People say, what, what's a session like? And I'm like, well, I don't know what it's going to be like for you. <laughs> I'm not in control of it. Right. I just get my vibration high enough and I allow whatever to happen. Um, like the dog barking, like all this, uh, the video the cutting disconnect. out all the time. Yeah, there's a reason for it. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. So just allowing it to be what it is, is the key. And I think I learned that working with kids in the school system who were labeled with different disabilities um, and witnessing uh, the dynamics that would go around all the dynamics of interactions around that person and just witnessing how every person responded to that individual differently. Like I found some of the kids and it was always the kids who had their own challenges. Mm -hmm. They had the biggest hearts and they were the most supportive and the most loving. And it always, I always thought I, I always wanted to do research and find out, you know, is there a reason that kids who are, are not like the straight and narrow, the average person, mm -hmm. they're always divergent in some way. Divergent. What is going on with why they are so loving? I always saw a pattern and it would usually the, be the most, you know, quote unquote, problematic child in the room. Mm -hmm was also the most loving and yeah. it was it was amazing to me it might not have happened very often but it was there so I saw all their behavior which is communication mm -hmm. that's what it is as a shield so that they could protect themselves and that's what I saw it as and once I saw it for that I saw the person behind that and realized who was really there. And so then it was just a matter of whatever moment I had to get that person to put down their defenses and to realize I wasn't going to hurt them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, that's beautiful and so needed. I think there's so much education around, like I was taught by different counselors or whatnot to treat my son as if he at his cognitive, the age that he was testing at, which would have been like seven or eight. And I mean, I understand that, you know, language wise, maybe coming up, but I couldn't like, I felt like he was always, I feel like that with everyone. I see so much more, you know, I can't just come in at and just talk to someone as, as if there, there's no other aspect to them. You know, I was, I think there's a term called presumption of competence, which yeah. probably has more of an ego bit to it, but um I don't always, think so. Always seen the 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 essence of of my children beyond their dis their die all their labels and diagnoses and yeah yeah yeah. So. I kind of coined it. It's my own term. <laughs> what is it? But um, I call it presence in education. So presence, when yeah. you're present for the person, one hundred percent standing in front of them listening mm. to everything they're saying and I would also feel it too mm -hmm. and I'd go with whatever happened there like one kid there were times when kids were were really upset and there'd be a, a disagreement and one kid this kid is kid a is ready to talk kid b is still raging mad and so the agreement was, well, we have to wait till everybody's calm because we can't solve a problem when people are angry. Right. So we have to wait. 
So kid A is, is like comes up to me and says, okay, I'm ready to talk now. And I said, well, kid B, I don't, they don't look like they're ready to yeah. me. So I think, and I talk about it to the child, kid A, where kid B could hear. So I'm not directing it at them, but mm -hmm. I'd say, well, when they're ready, they'll come, they'll come talk to me. They'll come let me know and I'll come get you. And they know that I will come talk to them as soon as they're ready. Um, so we'll just wait. And there were a couple instances where we had to wait a day. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. You can't and that force was hard that. For some, that was hard for some people to accept. And I thought, no, this is, it's not about acceptance. It's about trust. So doing that, waiting a day, sometimes two, Oh, was yeah. building trust with that student so that they knew they were in charge of what was happening. And so it's their 100% choice of what they did next. And so sometimes they'd try and talk to me and then they'd start spinning again in the emotion. And I'd say, okay, well, you're not ready yet. <laughs> because we're going back into the feeling of how yeah. it felt and we right. have to wait until that you don't you can talk about it without going back into the emotion of it and they'd go what and I said well you feel like it just happened don't you and they go yeah it did I said no it happened yesterday and wow. so it'd be having that discussion we got a little off tangent there but no that's it really seems to be important I don't uh, know why but yeah I think the it's it's holding that field of like you said presence unconditional love and not forcing um forcing situations like i know still my son and daughter will will spat and um one will be ready to apologize and the other one will say i'm not ready and i i'm yeah. just okay okay you're not All ready right. you can't force that you can't force somebody to say they're sorry if they're not ready to there are parameters because sometimes they would try to play together when they hadn't apologized to each other yet. And I said, Oh no, 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 that's not how it works. You are separated. You're not allowed to be near each other until we work this out, which sometimes was the catalyst to get wow, them to want yeah, to do it because they just wanted to go back to play again. And I never forced them to apologize. I never forced them to say, sorry. I said, I would always use the, the verbiage um have you worked it out do you both feel good mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. now because i didn't use the word fix because we didn't fix anything we just worked it out mm -hmm. and do you feel do you feel okay now do you feel like you guys are good and they'd say yes and the other one would say yes and i say okay do you want to say anything to each other and they sometimes they just both look at each other and go you want to go play <laughs> yeah okay and then off they go yeah I, it's funny because i'm thinking like if only we as adults could could practice that you know where we're not like you know because we go on for like what yeah. 20 years it's a hard one because we were taught such a different model yeah 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 um but. i i was gonna say uh about your work and then you did a session with me and I'm not going to go into detail about it, but uh, there was some work on limiting beliefs and, and my heart yeah. and through the process of that. And, and after it, I, there's lots, still lots of work that is happening, but um, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of cleared the way for me to really look at some ancestral stuff, I will say. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of, and I think that that kind of ties in with Jack and um mm -hmm. You know, I think yeah, there's a lot of sense. a lot of ancestral personal per, me personally, and then his ancestral whatever I want to say trauma or whatever that he, that he's with his father and whatnot. I think there's there's pieces here that are just being like shaken loose, and I feel like all the work we've done together has really cleared the way for some real um, integration for me personally and for Jack. And um, what a uh, needed service that you're providing in this <laughs> day and age i would say uh and i would encourage anybody who is interested in this type of thing or has like some kind of um i don't, I don't even want to say like it's not something that necessarily um everybody understands but 
what an experience to go through with your with your child and just me personally. So, so much gratitude. I think the world needs you. And I'm glad that our Thank paths you. crossed. And <laughs> um, do you have anything else you want to add about the work that you do or um, where people can find you? I do have a YouTube page, so I'll probably post it there. It's just under my first, my, my name, Kathy Marshall. Um, but my website is quantum wellness with Kathy.com. Um, and, uh, we can probably add it to whatever yeah. this is. So when I'm also an instructor of quantum touch, so that's the one thing I love is that I can teach other people how to do this. And, um, I don't want to do it for people. I want, I want people the... to learn how to do it. So I'd rather teach people um, how to do stuff, which is always happens when I work with someone as I, I always give quote unquote homework, but it's if someone chooses to do it or not, like you and Jack chose to go to the, the site where the hospital was or where you had that connection with the mm -hmm. land and thanked the land for all its work. Um, and, uh, something came up in your session and I, it was a very odd statement that was fairly, I know it was applicable to you, but it turns out it was applicable to me too. It came really? up for me a week later. Yeah. So the statement was old habit to go, no more worry. That was the statement. And when I received it, I usually get something more specific. So I wrote, I wrote about it because I woke up a few, maybe a week later and had um, a pretty profound experience that unraveled after. And it's all about that statement that came up in our session together, um, wow. which I, I just thought <laughs> I would share because I know you'd be fascinated by that. I am. And grateful too, because you always like to help others. Um, so I know that whole thing was supposed to be me helping you, but Richie in my did. experience, yeah, every, every time I work with another person, um, I'm always getting something out of it too. Oh. Uh, so it's, it's not, so it's not that I'm. I can raise my vibration to a level that allows you to heal um, your inner healer, or even just that conversation we had with Jack, he, his inner healer was, was doing the work, right? Because I'd raised my vibration before we, we got on the call. Cause I knew that's what I needed to, to do. Um, but it's fascinating to me because it came up later. And this, I can't tell you how many times I get messages through someone else's session, something that's they've directed, but the information is for you and for me. Wow. Yeah. That's and so I, cool. I'm constantly working on myself, um, doing all the inner work. It's sometimes not fun, but it, it actually oh. is a much more really relaxed after I can't, I can't tell you how great it feels to be on the other side of it oh man um, i'm telling you yeah so much relief i will say and it like yeah. you say there's 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 always work to be done or but just to mm, peace i think just to have a little bit of peace i think that's my level of peace has increased so yeah yeah I, and i for me it's acceptance for whatever it is that's happening it's supposed to have and everything i did in the past acceptance for that too wow which is hard probably for me too it's it's hard but just realizing all those things that happened got me to where i am today mm -hmm. so wish do i wish some of them didn't have to happen yeah 100 <laughs> percent. let's be wish honest here yes because the the <laughs> The emotion, the roller coaster I had to go through was so profound that I'm like, really? But now I can, I can, if someone else comes to me, I can say, I, I, I get it because yes. it, I'll get an image in my head of a similar 
experience and I'll understand that that's how much, so the, the, the level of intensity, I'll know, yeah. oh, they're talking about this and I'm thinking it's down here, but then I get a memory and I realize, oh, this is where they are. They're way up here. And then I think, okay, no, I, I got it. So when people say, oh, I understand you, sometimes you, you're like, no, no, you don't. You can feel I sometimes to... when people can. Yeah. I, I've had that experience recently where I did not feel energetically understood, but the words were such that I was. Yeah. It's like yeah. you have code. Is... You get code from the from feeling through those really harsh, mm, painful stuff. Like you have that. I think of it like as a bandwidth, like you, your bandwidth is it's wider and you can meet people more where they are, you know, because you ha have had yeah. that, you can tap in. And I'm wondering too, um, again, if you want, if this is too private, you can cut it out, but I'm, I'm wondering too, if when you said you're not as sensitive as Jack, I would probably disagree <laughs> strongly. Yeah. Well, I probably, it probably it's that, yeah, his physical body and the way he's, his, the way he's, I don't want to say made, but the way he came in, not came into the world, but his DNA is set up in a certain way that he's, he is the way he's supposed to be. Um, and so are you, but I'm feeling that the extra sensory of the two of you is very, very similar. So I think you taught yourself to shield it or would escape um, to get away from the feelings where he didn't ever escape and get away. I think he went internal, like in his into his mind. But that's my sense of it. But because I've, I've a lot of memories have started coming in of things that I probably um, suppressed and you know, like spaceships and just interesting stuff from my childhood that I thought was just all like imagination that now I look back, I'm like, did you really was like that? Was that? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, and, and, you know, reading people, I think I, I like can feel a sense of people, but I've had to mute it and all's perfect. You know, like you said, it's all brought me here, but it is I'm kind of going yeah. back and remembering that I do have those abilities. Thank you though, for bringing that out. It means a lot. I, I just thought I'd say it because I, I, whenever I hear someone say I'm, they're probably more sensitive than me. I always get this. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are they talking our, about? Our physical bodies are set up in different ways to be different antennas. So your antenna receives in a different way than his mm -hmm. or can withstand, let's say, and that, um, and you just experience, you just express it or suppress it or whatever in a different way than he does. But I'm getting the fact, I'm getting information that you guys actually feel things on the same level of intensity. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. That's, that's what I'm, the information yeah. I'm receiving, like. Thank you. I, I can uh, feel into that and I, I can get just some examples are coming to mind where we've kind of sharpened each other because we are tapping into some like traumas that we've been able to kind of integrate together where he's mm, like shown wow. me where, where I need to do some work. Wow. Yeah. He's, he's like, honestly, he's a gift, man. He is. And, and it's funny because there's a lot of times when I, I might not say that. <laughs> Well, there's a, there's yeah, a when lot you're of, um, experiencing it, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> you know, it's not that I always believe he's a gift. I, I think I feel the weight of like the programs that and his few, you know, I get I get caught up in, oh, my gosh, the future. And how is this? How is it going to look if, you know, so yeah. that's all. It's not that I ever think that he's not or any of my children or experiences, but that past and future kind of can pull me out of alignment with the with the the day-to-day -day stuff but thanks you for that yeah. reminder i i don't see anything negative about his future at all 
Thanks. Yeah, I'm starting to see more pieces of um, that hopefulness. I, I mean, I feel mm. more hopeful. Just bit mm -hmm. by bit, little piece by little piece. When I can remove mm -hmm. this like screen of like all that thought and judgment and whatnot, but well, it's a lot to unravel. It's a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. For all I, of us. I've done it. I've done it with my own son, and it it for completely different reasons. Um, but not so. <laughs> but it's the for me, it was um for me it was having been taught that parenthood is about control and having the child do what you want them to do and controlling them and I had to sit back and I had to unravel that um which actually had me in bed for days wow. with excruciating pain in my head <laughs> unraveling um the fact that I couldn't control and I didn't want to I actually really didn't want to mm -hmm. so it was it for me it was unraveling that programming of of no I don't I'm not here to control I'm here to allow free will and that's what I'm here for and to accept that even though I disagreed with something that it was totally okay and it actually taught me now to do that for everybody. Oh, and, wow. and that just because we don't agree on something doesn't mean we can't care for and love each other. Yeah. It just means we we don't agree. So what? Free will. Great. Go about your business. <laughs> so it, it was a big one for me. Really big one. I bet. I mean, we've, I, we could go on forever on this topic with the conscious parenting yeah. that I think I see my some of my younger friends that have have their kids are younger and they're they're doing kind of like what I wish I had the I don't wish because like we're here now yeah. and it all led here but I see this this ability this being more conscious and of what you're saying and doing and not the programmed way that we're supposed to parent just throw it out the window and yeah honoring yeah. the soul and anyways yeah unraveling unraveling <laughs> that's what we're wow. doing we're just unraveling i like that word because it's not you know you're not you're not removing a block which sounds negative you're not doing anything else you're just unraveling something I'm writing it down it's a good one thank you yeah because then it, code. it's it got a it does it has a different energy to it unraveling it's yeah. no there's no judgment no negativity with it it's like that's are we i think i picture like a uh, yarn like you just yeah, that's what I picture too. Really? I'm just like re I'm just unraveling something that was all messed up and I'm putting it in, in in whatever I want. Maybe I want it in a mess. Maybe I want it in a ball. Maybe I want it, you know, like around my arm, you know, <laughs> like whatever way I want to do it. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That I think pretty yeah. I feel like it's pretty good. I think we've come through. A pretty good discussion on this and mm -hmm. i appreciate your patience with the tech tech and yeah what i'm gonna do is did you notice how it stopped <laughs> i did i said a lot of prayers oh that does the work please <laughs> yeah <laughs> should have done that more at the beginning but i i think the pieces are there i think i'll be able to piece it together pretty easily so yeah it might take if me you some need... time okay yeah. If you need anything from me, just let me know. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. I am so glad that we met and love the work you're doing. And I highly encourage anybody to reach out to Kathy for, for this type of uh, support. So well, thank you. <laughs> I'll be in touch. Too. I love you too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.